bladed jigs that work from Florida to New York back to California. What makes them so good? Let's check it out. Jimmy Lee off of Fish Code Studios. We're gonna dissect the motions of the bladed jig, and we're gonna talk to a pretty good angler about how to make the hook sets even better. First things first, let's slow it down. Is the frequency range in which this bait shakes within the realm of the lateral line response properties? Think of this vibrating blade in the front as kind of like an automatic way of twitching a swimming jig really fast. There are multiple undulations on the skirt, something you can't achieve with your hand no matter how fast you think you are. It's a great bait, but don't take my word for it. I'm about to head over to meet Rick Klun out in Pladka, Florida. He had a little bit of downtime today, so I'm going to meet him out there and uh, talk fishing. I think the only time that I really lost them on the counter bait is when I really go and try to the hook. Well, and I tend to be leaning that direction. I think almost the hook set's almost a mistake. Right? That you, you just feel it, and you start reeling, and just and don't even pull fast. Just slowly start to pull, you know. Because like when I won, won that tournament and didn't lose a single fish, it was almost every one of them hit from the side or the back. Not a single one you hit, could see it. hit it from the head. Not, I, I, yeah, I could see the truck. I could see them come up. up. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and, and I really don't, I think even then what you're doing is, even if they do, and they're pushing the blade forward, so it's already where you want it. You don't have to straighten it out. People are still think that, you know, when you set the hook, like that tongue that hits. I'm just not necessarily convinced that a bass feels it. I'd want to see whether if it hits the back of its mouth, whether all of a sudden it just kind of, that's the trigger, or it's already kind of blowing it out. Well, but you can negate any movement of the bait in the fish's mouth, and that's what you want. You want some movement in there, whether, whether his mouth is open or closed. If the bait is wedged inside of it, and you're yeah. not moving that hook, then you're, not penet you're probably right. not penetrating right. it. And then when he opens his mouth, then it's, it's just a 50-50 whether you're going to catch something on the way out. If it's penetrated and you're not moving, and that hook's back there sitting, it hasn't penetrated, when this mouth goes from here to here, yeah, then, that's a lot of room to clear. That that's right. <laughs> so unless it's like at an angle where you can hopefully hook it to the side, but right. it's literally like, like this, then you're going right. to get shot at it. So to increase your hookup ratio, take it from Rick Klon and don't use a jerking hook set, but instead keep reeling and come tight. Man, it was such an honor to talk to Rick. He actually bought me dinner to talk to him for two hours in the St. John's River just before practice for the event that he won on the Elite Series. And I wanted to pay it forward and share some of his thoughts and my science today on today's episode. And if you like what you saw, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. I just like daydream about pitching, you know? Like I'll be in the middle of a talk. So my <laughs> just like, it's just like a soothing, like meditative yeah. thing. Oh, like, yeah. you know, just yeah. like, just thinking about pitching, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like the Zen artist said it, there's many forms of meditation. Just portion dishes can be meditation, you know, and just. Yeah. I think you're focused in, yeah. and it's, it's, you know, you got the. Your body's moving, your brain's flowing with it, you know? Yeah, you're connected to it.